Hey Randy, some time ago you did a great introduction to Bricklink Studio. Stud.io? Stud.io? Anyway, it was a good introduction to the program, but I actually use Lego Digital Designer for my computerized Lego planning. Your video convinced me to give Bricklink, I'm gonna say Studio, a try, and I thought I'd give a quick comparison of the two programs and share some of my thoughts on them. Both programs are actually pretty similar. They have mostly the same shortcut keys and camera movements, but just different enough to cause some confusion when switching back and forth. The hinge tool is a useful feature which both offer. This lets you move movable pieces so you can position them just right. It operates essentially the same on both platforms. I started to build this little house foundation in both programs and the process was mostly identical. In LEGO Digital Designer, the pieces are all stored here under certain categories. Bricks are repeated for each color variation, which can be frustrating since you have to scroll past so many copies of the same brick. However, you can filter by color, so that helps. You can also search for bricks too. Bricklink Studio seems to handle this differently. Bricks appear here, which you can search for as well, but they only appear as the color you have selected. This allows you to switch color for each brick, which means you can create some color brick combinations that don't actually exist. That's probably why there's this nifty checkbox to limit options to bricks that actually come in your selected color. Even though the Bricklink Studio method seems better, it's poorly implemented. Maybe I'm just not doing things right, but the whole color selection process is confusing to me. I wish it were more clear how to tell which colors certain bricks come in and how to select and change colors. One thing that trips me up is when I click the color, it doesn't immediately apply. There's some lag time, which causes me to impatiently click again thinking I didn't click it and that might set off some other color change I hadn't planned on. I'm sure I'll get the hang of it eventually though. Lego Digital Designer and Bricklink Studio both offer the ability to create build instructions. If I'm missing something, please tell me, but in Bricklink Studio, it seems like you have to designate each grouping into steps and then render images for steps separately. The end product is a variety of files showing the project each step of the way. For LEGO Digital Designer, the process is a lot easier, but perhaps less customizable. LEGO Digital Designer creates instructions automatically for you, and while this sometimes results in strange steps, the convenience is great. I also like the HTML export option, which makes it really easy to share your creations online. Of course, Bricklink Studio has a useful integration with Bricklink, which allows you to get a part list easily, and even begin the process of buying them all on Bricklink. LEGO Digital Designer was actually created by LEGO as part of a short-lived program where you could build your own designs and order them direct from LEGO. It's a shame that's not still supported today, but at least it did give us this great program. The Flex tool might be unique to LEGO Digital Designer. It allows you to bend and manipulate flexible pieces like chains. I couldn't find the same feature in Bricklink Studio. I suspect but haven't confirmed that Bricklink Studio also has more pieces available to work with. Aside from letting you color bricks in ways that don't exist, they just seem to have a wider catalog, which is probably updated by Bricklink on a regular basis, whereas the LEGO Digital Designer inventory is static and no longer being updated by LEGO as far as I know. Here I found this little strawberry piece in Bricklink Studio, but can't seem to find it in LEGO Digital Designer. Oh well. There's also this mysterious Build Together option, which suggests the ability for cooperative designing. I haven't tried it out yet since I'm a loner. Still, it could be an interesting and useful feature for collaborative projects. But here's an area LEGO Digital Designer definitely has Bricklink Studio beat. Ever wanted to know what would happen if you blew up your LEGO set? Well now you can see what would happen without the need for expensive and dangerous pyrotechnics. I guess this isn't all that useful of a feature, but still a nice addition of personality that's missing from Bricklink Studio. So there you go. They both get the job done well. You can't really go wrong with either. So it comes down to your personal preference and what your particular needs are. Bricklink Studio does offer an interesting build together mode though, which you and I should test out sometime. And its integration with Bricklink is a huge advantage if you're into that sort of thing. Personally, I find LEGO Digital Designer easier to use and it looks nicer too. Of course, it could just be that I'm much more familiar with it. I'll give Bricklink Studio a try some more and see if I can get the hang of it. Maybe you and I could even attempt a co-op build. See you soon.